Yeah, so I, I signed up in 2007, so it's, it's been pretty constant since 2007. Um, you know, I, I, uh, after the initial campaign, went to work at the White House for about two years, left that about a year ago, uh, had the chance to make some, some more fun slash terrible movies, depending on whether you like them. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I'm now volunteering again on the campaign through, uh, through November. Yeah. Yes? Um, you use the word negotiations when you're talking about Obama and Boehner. Um, now, there's a lot of um, issues in the past four years on things not getting passed and there being stalemates going on, at least in Wisconsin, there was a point where the Democrats walked out altogether. Um, how does the president plan on working with the other parties to actually make things happen? Good question. So we've seen a lot of success on this role, too. Um, I'm not as familiar with state politics, obviously, as I am with uh, the president's policies. But one thing that – this is something that shocked me. So especially as an independent, you know, I continue to have a lot of faith in the president. When I got to D.C., um, a couple of weeks basically after I started my job, uh, one of the Republican senators, uh, Mitch McConnell, uh, was doing an interview and he said that his number one priority was to make sure President Obama fails. And I thought that was very strange because I, I was thinking like jobs, finding Bin Laden, you know, any <laughs> uh, And he said his number one priority is to make sure the President failed. And I think that was the first time I realized how like the nature of contentious nature of political parties sort of inflating work. And so when I saw the president actually sit down and negotiate with people, a lot of times these folks would legitimately come in and sit down at the table and not speak. So that they could say that they came in, but don't have to answer any questions about any legitimate negotiation. Um, I think part of part of this is, you know, actually having uh, folks on the right and the left who are willing to have those conversations. And seeing, you know, someone like the president saying, you know, I'll have a beer with you over this, or come, come play golf if you don't actually want to sit down and talk about it. But I think that's just a question of character on both sides, and certainly on both sides of the aisle, there's plenty of room for uh, criticism, depending on what issue you're talking about. But in addition to sort of all of those uh, pieces of legislation that were blocked, what I was really impressed with was the way that the president and vice president were able to wrangle enough votes to get all the things passed that we did pass. So, uh, you know, on the environment front, uh, things like fuel mileage standards, which was so historic and never happened before. Um, you know, on, on the immigration front, uh, getting so close to actually passing the Dream Act, even though it failed, being able to do something like the status. Um, student loan reform, which got really buried under all the health care reform pieces, but um, student loan reform, which basically took $60 billion that big banks used to get from the federal government. They would mark up the money and loan it out to young people, so getting rid of the middleman and student lending uh, allows a lot more money to the young people. So these are all things that he was able to pass. Um, and I guess playing devil's advocate, the it's good that we don't live in a dictatorship, so that there is like push and pull. But I would agree with you that there's a point after which push and pull becomes a little ridiculous, and you want people to have a rational conversation. I have a chance to see him do that, so I'm hopeful that that'll. Because both parties are both lobbying to get, I guess, their laws, their bills passed. Right. So it's a little frustrating seeing if nothing happens. Well, I wouldn't say nothing's happened at all. I would say Not nothing, a lot of amazing things have happened. There's a great video you should check out um, that if I remember to tweet the link to, I can do that. But it's it's on the White House website. The president sat down with um, six young Democrats, six young Republicans, and four young independents in Boston like a year and a half ago. Um, and uh, we happen to have our video crew. So none of his remarks were scripted. He was thinking of questions. And a young Republican said, how do you, you, know, how do you feel about people who say they're disappointed in the pace of progress. Um, and he, way more eloquently than I will tell you right now, was basically outlining like, you know, if, if we only talk to people who disagree with us, then politics is always going to disappoint you. And the whole point is that you're never going to get 100% of what you want. So you, you have to sit down and actually talk to people and figure out how to get that done. And I think that if we expect 100%, then we're always going to be disappointed. But we also shouldn't expect 40%. We should actually look at you know, if you're if you're talking about a budget negotiation, if you're talking about something like you know the president doubled the Pell Grant um, and fought really hard to get that done. I don't know what other concessions had to be made budgetarily, uh, but I know that you know we were just talking about if the president goes through the budget with a essentially with a scalpel, so not bludgeoning programs, but saying okay, in order to increase this, what do we have to decrease? Are there federal programs that aren't making sense? Um, things like that. So I think looking at it with that kind of nuanced perspective, know, know, knowing that that's how he goes about it, has been helpful. Just for me, having never worked in politics before and getting thrown into it, um, realizing exactly what was at stake.